left. So definitely. Okay. Uh, the negotiation was, uh, as I as I said earlier, we didn't decide anything except that if we needed to work together, we would, and that came from a meeting that, that our whole core group, Ron Paul, Monday night meeting on March 19th, we talked about what happened on the previous Saturday and said, if we have to deal, who do you prefer that we deal with? And the majority felt like that the Santorum, uh, that Rick Santorum was more of a danger to Liberty than any of the other candidates. And, and of course, Newt Gingrich was also uh, in that Camp as well, but he didn't. He wasn't going to have the numbers. It didn't look like to be able to deal with. So our choice as a group was that we would deal with the Romney team. And so our only agreement prior to walking on the floor was that if we did not have the numbers, that would be the camp that we would deal with. And we also had worked together. Um, our our county um, chair had called a meeting of all four campaigns and put out the word at that meeting that if. If we wanted to work on rules, this is the time to do it. So the Romney and Paul campaigns worked together to create the rules that we proposed, which were eventually passed at the caucus. And so we had worked on rules together and agreed on the rules. So we had pretty much a basis. If we needed to work with them, we would. But uh, just so no one will say this, we wanted to make clear that there was no deal um, of percentages or anything discussed prior to the caucus. Uh, as far as making a deal. But Paul was the one who actually did make the arrangements on the floor of the caucus. Because we had, you guys ended up having to. You didn't want to, but from what you're saying is, look, we, we got to get something. And, and you guys got, obviously did the right thing because Aaron said you guys came out with the most delegates. So that's what I, I also want you to let people know is that when they go to these caucuses, you know, obviously these people are, are on our side. I don't know why they're supporting Santorum or Romney, but we got to play this chess game, and we got to win. So we got to play to win. So uh, yeah, uh, go ahead and tell, say what happened with the Romney supporters. Uh, who is it, Paul? Yeah, okay. uh, this is Paul. <clears throat> you know, our people were were pretty excited coming into the caucus. Uh, many of them remember uh, what we accomplished four years ago when we ran the table uh, at the Jackson County Caucus. We we actually made the national news by what we accomplished. And so there was a, a high expectation, a, a, a high uh, expectation that we would do the same thing at our caucus uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and so it was uh, very difficult uh, for us to look each other in the eye and to acknowledge that, that we were so close uh, to having a majority, but we were just, just enough short uh, to make it dangerous uh, to bet the farm on going all or nothing. And so it took us a long time on the caucus floor to come to the to the realization that we would actually have to talk to the Romney people um, if we didn't want to get closed out of another deal. <clears throat> and so early on, uh, of course, I had not uh, met any of the Romney people uh, before we arrived at the caucus. Um, I was first introduced to, to a couple of local attorneys who were supposed to be leading the charge for the Romney campaign. And they, were, they were nice easy to talk with, easy to deal with. Uh, and then all of a sudden there appeared a man who didn't seem overly connected with these guys who was in a bargaining uh, position for the Romney campaign. And of course uh, initially I in good faith uh, you know, dealt with this individual. Um, believing that he was a legitimate resident of Jackson County and a legitimate participant in the caucus. As it turns out, he was not. Uh, he was a representative of the, the Romney national campaign, and uh, he was not only not from Jackson County, he wasn't even from Missouri. Uh, he was from New Jersey. So he was kind of a hired gun uh, to, hide, to come in uh, and deal and basically negotiate on behalf of the Romney campaign. Yeah, All at the same time, our national representative <coughs> uh, was confined to the parking lot. So the people that were actually in charge of running the caucus knowingly let this uh, national Romney guy into the caucus floor while keeping the Ron Paul national representative out in the parking lot in an obvious violation of caucus rules. Now, uh, 
the National Romney campaign guy uh, snuck, snuck in. He acknowledged that he snuck in. He knew that he was there illegally, uh, but so we continued. Anyway, I didn't figure out that he was from outside of Missouri till we got well into the caucus. On the on the front end, I believed him him to be a legitimate uh, caucus participant. So anyway, he came in with a strict agenda. He felt that he had gained uh, delegates uh, from other counties in the 5th Congressional District. And so he had a bottom line number uh, that he wanted to uh, uh, walk away with in terms of delegates from the Jackson County Caucus. <clears throat> and uh, he made it clear that, he, that they were really primarily looking for a media win, that they wanted to, to claim bragging rights uh, for having taken Missouri's 5th Congressional District. Uh, so he was willing to give us virtually all of the alternates uh, for a select number of delegates that he had predetermined when he walked in. And, and he, was, uh, uh, he was very adamant. <clears throat> he, he wasn't really much into negotiating on that. So it was kind of an all, all or nothing arrangement with him. <clears throat> uh, in the meantime, our national representative in the parking lot was working, you know, working kind of a deal with him as well. And so we ended up splitting our slates. Most of the time when you elect a slate, that slate of delegates will go to the Congressional District uh, Convention as well as to the State Convention. And that was our original arrangement with the Romney people. Um, but as the day evolved, we were able to get them to split the slates so that we had a certain number going to uh, the District Convention and a different number going to the State Convention, which worked to our advantage. Uh, but all the time, uh, I was talking to this uh, this national campaign guy for Romney. Uh, mm -hmm. It was clear it was clear that he uh, was uh, set and very determined on his numbers, and that there was very little wiggle room there. Uh, and that if we didn't play ball with him, that he would strike up a conversation on the caucus floor with with Santorum people. I think they didn't want to do that, uh, but they were bound to determine that they were going to get you know the numbers that they needed. Um, yeah on the caucus that day. And if they didn't get it from us, they would walk across the room and talk to the Santorum people. So, And it was a little bit challenging throughout the day as well. <clears throat> um, as the day unfolded, of course, people got tired. People began leaving. Our national representative in the parking lot had a clicker. And he was actually counting the people who were leaving. And of course, uh, more <laughs> That's awesome. I'm sorry? I said that's pretty good right there. I mean, you, for all Paul supporters, boy, we are just so focused. Well, this, this was a very good, I had not thought about doing that. I'm not sure any of us had thought about doing that, but our national pa campaign guy really helped us dramatically by staying in the parking lot, and he counted the number of Santorum people that were leaving, the number of, of uh, Romney people that were leaving, and the number of Ron Paul people that were leaving. We had already told our people that you need to stay in the fight. You need to stay in this until we get all of our votes accomplished, uh, that you shouldn't desert your troops in the heat of battle. And our people stuck around. Even though we had the most people there by a comfortable margin, uh, we had the very smallest percentage of our own people that were leaving, where the Santorum people were kind of leaving in droves, uh, and the Romney people were kind of right behind them. So I told the Romney people later in the day, I kind of put him on notice, and I said, look, uh, our deal is a perishable commodity. We gave up delegates to get votes, and your people, your votes, are walking out the door. If you can't keep your people here, then you're jeopardizing our deal. Well, of course, we were accused of reneging on our deal and so forth, and we had to convince them, look, you know, um, we, we made a deal, but you need to hold up your end of it. Yeah. So that, be that became a, a tense uh, series of moments on the caucus floor. Okay, okay. They Paul. were wondering we were using that as an excuse to renege on our deal. Of course. Okay. All hey, the Paul, time, you there? can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can Sorry hear about you. that. It's just the, the song on again. We are approaching the end of the show. I'm going to talk to all three of you guys after the show, and maybe we can work something out again.